Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, nominally, we are talking about a new report from the information that suggests that OpenAI could be on track to spend $5 billion this year. We'll get into their arguments and what sourcing they have for this, but we're going to situate it in the broader context of whether Wall Street is starting to turn and view AI as being in a bubble. Let's get into the reporting from the information first, though. If you listen to this show regularly, you probably know that the information is one of the best sourced, if not just straight up the best source publication when it comes to insider information about the AI industry. Their analysis is based, they say, on undisclosed internal financial data, as well as people involved in the business. They write our conclusion pinpoints why so many investors worry about the profit prospects of conversational artificial intelligence. Our results also underline the question of whether those companies will eventually need to charge higher prices for their technology if they can't find a way to reduce the cost of developing and running AI. So, with that in mind, let's get into the details. The information argues that as of March, OpenAI was on track to spend around $4 billion this year on basically renting servers. That comes from a person with direct knowledge of the spending. And that is, of course, just for running ChatGPT. That's not about training costs. Those training costs, including their new deals where they pay for data, could be as much as $3 billion this year. A person with direct knowledge of the decision said that last year, OpenAI ramped up the training of new AI faster than it had originally planned. The company had earlier planned to spend around $800 million on such costs, but ended up spending considerably more, and so the information is estimating that those costs will double this year. Next, they estimate OpenAI's 1,500-strong workforce to cost them around $1.5 billion, but this seems to be one of the areas where they are least confident, calling it a guesstimate to be sure. OpenAI had previously projected workforce costs of $500 million for 2023, while doubling headcount from 400 to 800 over the course of that year. Given that it's nearly double that workforce again and is likely to add even more people in the second half of this year, that's where that $1.5 billion estimate comes from. So that puts OpenAI's operating costs this year at around $8.5 billion, or at least as high as $8.5 billion. The revenue story is one we've heard before. ChatGPT recently was on pace to generate around $2 billion annually. Although as the information flags, the issue that OpenAI faces of people using a free version of ChatGPT, raising computing costs without generating revenue, could be exacerbated this year when Apple begins rolling out ChatGPT on the iPhone. As of March, the information writes, OpenAI's API business was generating around $80 million per month, and so all in all, they estimate that its full-year revenue could be between $3.5 and $4.5 billion depending on sales in the second half of this year. From there, it's just a matter of simple math. Potential costs of up to $8.5 billion from revenue of up to $4.5 billion, and you get losses of between $4 and $5 billion. Now, it's not like OpenAI isn't clear-eyed about this. Sam Altman has previously described the company as the, quote, most capital-intensive startup in Silicon Valley history. But, as the information points out, quote, it means OpenAI will need to raise money soon. Where does this put them relative to competitors, though? Well, the piece argues that although OpenAI may be burning a lot of cash, it's better off than some of its rivals. They point to a discount in what it pays Microsoft for renting its servers, and its better revenue profile than its competitors like Anthropic. The piece estimates Anthropic's revenue to be between a fifth and a tenth of OpenAI's, yet their burn may be around 50% of OpenAI's. According to a person who saw the figures, earlier this year Anthropic had projected spending $2.5 billion on computing costs alone. Anthropic projects that it'll reach around $800 million in annualized revenue this year, but shares some of that with Amazon, meaning that its net could be between $400 and $600 million, leading to the information's conclusion that, quote, although Anthropic is growing faster than OpenAI, it is nowhere near as efficient. So what comes next? Well, in classic business fashion, OpenAI is looking at ways of reducing costs and generating more revenue. The reports are that OpenAI is planning to launch a search engine as well as a computer using agent, both of which would handle different types of multi-step tasks. They also anticipate GPT-5, whatever it ends up being called, due out before the end of the year, which could be another boon to growth. So that is the OpenAI story. Nothing in there I think is particularly surprising, but it is expensive, and it of course then plays into the larger debate around the ROI from AI that we've been discussing over the past few months. The Wall Street Journal yesterday published a piece called Google Fails to Wow as AI Bills Mount. Advertising business faces tough growth comparisons while AI spending continues to surge. I mentioned that the interpretations of Google's recent financial results were sort of a Rorschach test, and the Wall Street Journal here is kind of trying to play both sides. They start the piece, it's good to be Googled these days, but it isn't easy and it will keep getting harder. And effectively, the story that they're telling is revenue growth that is right around expectations, although a little bit better, but increased capital expenditure, particularly on AI infrastructure, that just seems to continue to be going up. Don't expect to see a shift in Google's strategy anytime soon, however. CEO Sundar Pichai said during the earnings call, look, obviously we're at the early stage of what I view as a very transformative area. 
the risk of underinvesting is dramatically greater than the risk of overinvesting for us here. Mark Zuckerberg of Meta has made a very similar point. And an additional point I'll make, which I do think is germane to the whole bubble conversation, is that these are not levered companies getting into some risky area that's more smoke and mirrors than real opportunity. Alphabet is sitting on $98 billion in cash. That gives it a lot more room to run when it comes to these sorts of big long-term bets. But the bubble talk keeps increasing. The Washington Post writes, Big Tech says AI is booming. Wall Street is starting to see a bubble. The industry has rushed headlong into AI and stock market investors are following them, but a growing number of analysts are skeptical. Then again, the quote-unquote growing number of analysts actually are pretty much the same voices that keep saying the same thing over and over. Jim Cavello, who is the main skeptic in that Goldman Sachs piece that we did a deep breakdown on recently, is the lead quoted analyst here. What's undeniable is that this week has been rocky when it comes to public markets. The BBC writes, shares drop in US and Asia as AI stocks slide. On Wednesday, the S&P 500 lost 2.3%, and NASDAQ fell 3.6%, which is its biggest one-day fall since 2022. In the same way that for the last couple of years, all the gains have been driven by big tech, and particularly big tech that's touching AI, the losses this time were also driven by those firms like NVIDIA, Alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, and Tesla. Said Jun Bai Lu, a portfolio manager at Tribeca Investment Partners, investors are now becoming more concerned about all this expenditure with AI without the revenue benefit. I don't think this will mark the start of the disbelief in AI, it just simply means investors will focus more on returns in this space than just buying the whole sector. And that, my friends, would be a completely reasonable thing. One of the weirdnesses of AI is the fact that Wall Street is involved so early because of the presence of big tech at such an early stage in a new technology's life. Usually there's a decade or more where something like generative AI would be incubated in the private market bastion of Silicon Valley before it came to public markets. But because of the particular dynamics of AI, that's just not the case this time around. And Wall Street isn't necessarily having the easiest time figuring out how to price things. I think ultimately we need to break apart the conversation around the market bubble and valuation bubble from AI value and utility. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.